Okay, welcome back to the Neo Marketing Podcast. On today's episode, we're going to find out why I object to objectives. Welcome to the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast, a bi weekly discussion of modern business communication. All right, Kyle, how are you doing in these uh, interesting times? Sir? Well, as good as I possibly could be right now. I'll put it that way. There we go. There we go. It is a strange, sometimes brave new world. Well, we're taking an alternative path to the to the to the uh, podcast here today. We're social distancing, uh, so it's not our normal setup for those of you watching it on video. Uh, but we're doing our best to bring you guys great information. There's a ton of things people need to hear right now, and so that's right. what we're here for. Exactly. And as I mentioned off camera before we started, I think I, I, I should probably be talking about COVID-19, the pandemic, social distancing, the impact on business, but everybody's talking about well, and that. Well, we've, we've been talking about it for six weeks now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've done several podcasts. And honestly, if you're looking for that information in the podcast right now, go an episode or two back. They're both about uh, COVID-19. Specifically, one says, uh, you know, how to manage in a COVID-19 economy. So yep. uh, if you're looking for that information, we have it for you available. Go find it. But today, what are we going to talk about? Today, we're going to talk about one of my pet peeves, and that is that communications, especially public relations folks, don't seem to know how to write objectives. Oh, yes. There's a massive confusion on this topic. Uh, you know, they put something down and it's a goal, or That's they right. put something down and it's a tactic. Yes, or... it's usually a tactic. That's the pet peeve for me is uh, people go straight to tactics and it just drives me insane. I'm like cart yeah. before the horse, Hor- horse before the cart, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's one of the things that I struggle with, of course, with my students is that they want to go to the fun stuff, which are the tactics, yeah. the execution. Yeah, they want to get down into the thing that they think they think the boss is looking for because it has measurement attached. Right. Well, it really doesn't. And that's one of the that's one of my pet peeves. You got to go right back to, okay, you have a goal and that's very general. It doesn't have measurement, it doesn't have execution. Right. It is we we want to be known as the best or, you know, there's reputation, yeah. there's relationship. Um, but the, the, the next step is the most important in my mind in planning. And it's the part that most people overlook or do very shoddily. And that's the objectives. I agree. The objectives are how you're defining success. Yes. There, and you must define success before you start. Absolutely. You know, there's some flexibility. You know, it, as you work through the process, things will change. You'll adapt along the way. But if you don't do it before you start, you have no idea if you're on the right path or not. Absolutely. And it's, you know, everybody struggles with measurement and evaluation. Well, if you do your objectives well, yep. you don't have to worry mm-hmm. so much about that. That you know, Then it's a function of execution, not trying to figure out what you're doing. That's right. There are three levels of objectives, and every goal must have all three levels. Mm-hmm. It's awareness, and it's how we learn, too. It's yeah. awareness, acceptance, and action. Yes. So first you have to become aware of something and then you form an attitude about it, right. and then you're ready to take action. Yes. And our the the our customers, our clients, the folks that we're working with are at all three levels. Yes. And so you need to have all three levels of objectives built like, in. There. Occasionally, a startup is just at 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 the first level at, at just awareness. Awareness. But even then. Someone who becomes aware today, someone else is not aware tomorrow or the next day. So at, at, at any point in time, any marketing message uh, or any communication at all is at all three stages. Absolutely. And people could go from one to the next very, very yes. quickly. But you or, still, or not. Or sometimes not. quickly and sometimes right? it's very exactly. slow. Exactly. Yes. And that's where people kind of fall down, I think, is they just automatically assume – that you fly through this process. And sometimes you do. If you can put a Super Bowl ad out, you fly through the whole thing in one in one <laughs> thirty second spot. But if you're not spending millions of dollars to throw at something relatively fast, it takes a while to work through this process. And you are have you do have people in multiple phases of the process. Absolutely. Which means it never stops. Which means it never stops. Yes. And you know, so somebody gets to awareness, you want to push them to acceptance. Mm-hmm. Get them to acceptance, you want to push them to action. Right. So so how do you properly craft an objective? Ah, great question. A proper objective. Yes. Well, I've got some clues for Excellent. you. Excellent. <laughs> and the first one is turn into Charlie Brown's teacher at the very beginning, right? <laughs> wah, 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 wah,
<laughs> because every objective should begin with to have an effect upon. Okay. To have an effect upon. That's what we're trying to do. Write that down, people. Okay. After that, then you need to figure out what the what the category of uh-huh. of objective okay. we're talking about. Awareness, acceptance, or action. So to have an effect upon the awareness of mm-hmm. now who who are we who is our target right. stakeholder, right? And There's then, primary and secondary, so that doesn't have to just be a singular target. It can be multiple targets, but you have to go through this process for each of for those each targets. For each one of them, that's absolutely. Right. That's, the, that's the key point. This is singular to a target yeah. stakeholder. So once you've got your, your stakeholders in there, then we need to talk about direction. Mm-hmm. The direction is specifically to, so to have an effect upon yes. the awareness of your yes. target stakeholder, specifically now, to create, to generate, to increase, to maintain, to, to maximize, right, uh, reinforce, whatever. And then the specific effect, awareness, mm-hmm. right? With awareness, it's attention or comprehension. With, uh, attitu- with uh, attitude or acceptance, it's interest or attitude. And with action, it's either behavior or opinion. Right. And here's where you go through who, 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 when, where, what, how, right? It's, it's all of the things people need to know about something for them to understand awareness. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, so that's uh, to have an effect on or upon the awareness, acceptance, action of your, speci- of your target stakeholder, specifically to whatever you're trying to do, generate, maximize, minimize, right? And then the um, effect that you want to have, the specific direction that you want, right? After the, I'm sorry, after the direction, it, it's the specific action that you want to have happen. And then the most important part and the part that almost always gets left out right. is the measurement and time frame. <laughs> no one ever wants to do that because that's the hard part. Uh, right. But because you've done your research, you know where people are basically at all three of those levels, right? And typically awareness is easier to get. Yes. So it's going to be the bigger number. That's right. Accept- or Low-hanging fruit. Right. Action is the hardest of all, so it's yes. going to be the lowest yes. number. But you've got to put some numbers against it, mm-hmm. and you have to put a time frame against it. And I find people don't want to do – they don't want to talk about measurement and, and effectiveness because they're so afraid when you write a number down that that holds you accountable. The boss is going to go, well, you said X, and we didn't hit X, and so you're fired or you're in trouble. When – and, and they're also afraid it kind of shoehorns them into it has to be done this way. It's not the case at all. In fact, the more structure you put in this process, the more flexibility you have in the execution on it because at least you know you're moving in the right direction or completely not moving in the right direction. Right. So big, broad numbers, timeline, et cetera, it has, it's the only way it's measurable, if it, if, how much and, and when, uh, because without a timeline, it's, well, we got another year, 10 years or right. 50 years, right. right? But if you don't create that structure now, you don't have any ability to move along with the feedback from your audience in the process. Well, because you have nothing to, to base it against. It's, it's, it, we can't have it both ways. Right. We say it's so difficult to That's measure right. uh, public relations, in particular communications, what's the value of a relationship. But if, if we put numbers against this, then, yeah, the boss may hold us accountable, will hold us accountable. Right. We should hold ourselves accountable. We should. And, and so then you get an idea of whether or not um, how far along you are. Yes. That if you miss the mark. You can go back and troubleshoot it and why. My guess is that your research wasn't solid enough, and so your numbers to begin with weren't good enough. Typically, too many assumptions. Right. Too many uh, how we've always done it or just routines. And at some point in the process, uh, what was doing well won't. And if you and if you understand, and if you've been measuring, and if you've been collecting data along the way, you'll understand what that tells you and how to readjust. Yeah. But but if you're afraid of learning, yep. then you'll never readjust, and you will fail. There is nothing wrong with failure as long as you don't right. do it over and over and over you just again. Just keep learning from it. And indeed, if you think about your own life, you probably learn more from the mistakes you made over your lifetime than you did the lessons that you were taught. No one's an expert on day one. Right. 
And uh, what is it that the Jordan, uh, Michael Jordan quote, since everyone's talking about Michael Jordan right now, <laughs> right. Like, right? That he has missed more shots than he's made. Uh, right. And he lists all of like how many baskets he's, how many shots he's missed, how many free throws he'd missed, how right. many uh, fouls he'd committed. And it's like, when you think of it like that, you would say, oh, that guy wasn't good. He was a he's failure. the greatest <laughs> ever. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the old adage, you, you miss 100% of the shots you don't Absolutely. take. Absolutely. So. You know, do your homework, right. do your research, be solid, have a solid foundation. Have no fear. And then have no fear and put the numbers against yep. it and a time frame. That's really important. There and that go. can be a specific time frame or it can be generic by May 31st of 21 yeah. or within a year. Right. Uh, or this quarter or, or something. Or this quarter, right. And then for me, one of the things I like to do, so if I set something, obviously if if, if you have a, a – something that's super newsworthy, super timely, and it's a, it's a short time period. But if you're talking about our startup and over the next year we're going to accomplish X, Y, and Z, I definitely like then to break down that into – and typically like break it in half, right? right? So right. if it's a year goal, there's a half year. Then there's a quarterly. Then within the quarters, there's a monthly. But what, the further down in the process you get, especially at the first half of the whole process, right. you can be less rigid in, in what you have to do. But you have to set those milestones and check-ins yep. to figure out if you're on the right path or not or if you've deviated somewhere along the way. Because just because you start on the right path – doesn't mean you were going to end on the right path. Well, and, and circling back again, the objective is your baseline. All right. So you're talking about milestones, and, and that's a measurement, and we could have a whole conversation about that. But that's exactly why the objective is so dadgum important. That's right. It's because, you one, you haven't defined success if you haven't put measurement and time frame in there. You, and two, at the end, you can't evaluate anything, and during, <laughs> you can't measure anything because no. you don't have any numbers against it. So. And another thing that I have some advice for you out there, folks, uh, especially if you're, um, if you're a rookie uh, or if you've never really done a complete uh, campaign like this before, it can be very intimidating, the white piece of paper, right? Where do I start, right? This is a fantastic place to start. And as the discussion that Prince, Pritch and I are having is starting with basic ideas and then breaking down as, as, as to how that works out. The simple idea of measurement across the year, and then I just gave you half quarter, like so. That's the fastest way to get something on the paper to begin right. a structure. Right. And then you backfill into the logistics of how you can actually execute it, what your what what your particular situation is, the tools needed, et cetera. So starting with a blank page can be very intimidating, but setting I need to set I need to set my objectives. And here again is the three levels of objectives. Right. So we set goals, we set objectives, three levels of objectives, now creating a basic uh, measurement and timetable. Now you have some. You have half the page full where you right. had nothing to begin before. Exactly, and I can tell you, I, the four words that will fill that paper up immediately are to have an effect upon. There because you go. That's how every objective that's begins. Right. So, uh, you know, it's formu formulaic, yes, but formulas can help us greatly yes. fill that blank space. It's so. a starting place and structure, and then you fill in with what's very specific to your situation, right. again, with the idea that it can be adaptable and flexible if necessary. Right. So um, I've got a PowerPoint that I use in my class. We'll put that in the, okay, we'll in put the, in the notes links. and the links and okay. whatnot. Um, but um, that, that uh, I, I think we could go a long way in our business world, in yes. our success, if we can, if we can back up and f and define victory the right way, and that's with objectives. And that's why I object to most of the objectives. I see what you did there. <laughs> Real quickly, give a definition, because I think people need to hear this too, because I, I do see people confuse objectives and tactics all right. the time. Right. Give a... a, a We've been talking about objectives, but give give that summary real quick, and then give a summary of tactics to explain the distinct difference between the two. Yeah, um, well, in my mind, they are very easily distinguishable. I, I agree, uh, but uh, I see people uh, confuse them all the time. You betcha. And and the step in between, which we could have a whole yes. separate conversation on, is strategy, and we have talked about that. We, on this we, show. There's plenty of of uh, podcast out there from us from us about strategy. About strategy. So. The, the objective is the definition of success. There you go. The shorthand. What are you trying to accomplish? Right? What are you trying to accomplish specifically? Yes. What are you trying to accomplish? The tactics are nothing more than the steps that you take 
to get to your objectives. Yes. And, and to get to your strategy, which is in between objectives and tactics. And strategy is how you manage your tactics based on the objectives. Well, yeah. And if you think about it, the strategy is the destination. The tactics are the way you get there. Yes. Also, objectives, much like goals, are concepts and ideas. And tactics are execution. Tactics right. are Hands yep. on. How does it happen? Absolutely. Actions, verbs. And I and I sh- and I should also say you don't put strategy and tactics in an objective. That's no. the other mistake I see people yes. make. And uh, you know we're finishing up our campaigns class this semester. Just had uh, dress rehearsals this past week, and almost all of them had strategy and tactics in there. So it's you know it's 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 easy to do. But we've got to pull those things out of it because there are separate sections for those things in the plan. Actually, just finished. I uh, was one of the judges for uh, a business plan competition for college, collegiate students. It's, it's sponsored by Love's Travel Stop here in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, so it's the Love's Cup is what they call it uh, for small bi- colleges, large colleges. Right, they all compete in a business plan competition. And I can't tell you how many times, because these are college students, so they don't have, they're not worldly experienced, right? right. But they have, right. they have their professors helping them along in theory, because <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I can't tell you how many business plans started it off with, with a very basic idea of what the business was, because these are, it's a business plan competition, so it's not a real business, it's something they created in their, their head. It could become a new business, but it's not necessarily based on a brick and mortar existing, this thing happens right here. Right. Um, and so a lot of times when it becomes very conceptual like that, people get out of the formula of goals, objectives, strategy, tactics. And Almost every one of these students in the business plan competition wanted to go straight to tactics, number one. Right. You know, so we're going to launch the business and then use social media. Okay. Launching the business is one thing. Using social media is completely tactical. There have been no goals or objectives, no measurements at all. Right. And then the other uh, mistake here, and this is for all you under 40 folks out there in the world, the... Even if you have a purely digital product, the idea of launching a business and only using social media to sell a product at a profitable return rate is ludicrous. Right. It's not going to happen. I don't care what it is. Unless your name's Kim Kardashian. (laughs) You know, or, you know, or Barack Obama or someone who is known at that level. Right. The idea that you're going to launch a new product or service, and even if it's some digital, even if it's click here and you get, download the app or or whatever it is, something you can do on your phone that's easy to do via social media, still the idea that you're going to start up a Twitter account and an Instagram and a Facebook and that people are going to be flocked to it because they exist. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Cart and horse again. Right. And then you're going to... Create your transaction, execute, and collect your money. You send them the item, whatever it is. The, the idea that this happens because you started a Twitter account is the silliest. Yep. I don't hold my tongue there. The silliest stuff I've right. I see, But I see people say it all the time. Well, it's so pie in the sky that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a million followers on, on platforms. And people right now with a million followers now, remember when it was really right. imp- Really right. impressive to have a million followers. Like, holy right. cow. That's not impressive anymore. Right. When it comes to actual conversion of followers to making a transaction to you making money, that rate is astronomically low. So please stop writing business plans based on we will use social media only to sell this product or service. Right. It just won't work. And listen, what, what you graded was missing – what we're talking about. That's right. And that's objectives. That's why sure. I dinged them every single time. Yep. And I think if if they honestly had worked through goals and objectives and strategy, then when it came to tactics, it would have not just been social media. And I understand right. what they're all doing. They're all they're not they're all thinking about I don't have any money. Right. Uh, you know, I don't have deep pockets here to to put this on. But even then, the idea of because social media is free, well, it's free for a reason because it's not that effective when it comes to actual conversion. Right. And they also forget that 
If you really think you're going to hustle on social media, it's not an hour a day. It's not two hours right, a day. Exactly. It's 12, 16, 18 hours a day yep. of creating it's content, of making posts, of aggregating, you know, yep. all of this stuff. And then you yep. still have to have the mechanism for conversion. Right. You still have to actually sell something, take money on online or otherwise, package up whatever it is and put it in a box and ship it to them or, you know, send them a digital download or whatever it is. You still have to have all that infrastructure in place. And none of that is free. Right. So the idea that free social media is the way to go. Free social media is great support for selling. But uh, without an, uh, already having an audience, that's why famous people already have any advantage, or creating something that became newsworthy. You know, you, you're, if, right now, if you invent something that, that cures COVID-19, yeah, the whole world wants it. But just because you tweet about it doesn't mean they're actually going to run out and buy it. Because right. Social, bunch uh, of other and stuff social proof and all the things right. too. So exactly. Um, so yes, develop your marketing strategy. Develop f- starting with goals, objectives, strategy, tactics, measurement, and then time table. All of that start to finish. If you don't have all of those elements, you're not finished. Go back to the drawing board yep. until you are. Take a look at them. So just to recap, the objective format yep. is. To have an effect upon, that's the very first thing you say. What do you want them to do? And then the category, awareness, acceptance, action, right? And then your your target stakeholders. Right. And then the direction, what do you want to do specifically to, what, create, maximize, minimize. Right. And then we talk about the specific effect, which is attention or comprehension if it's awareness. It's interest or attitude if it's acceptance, it's opinion or behavior if it's action. And then we have to put the performance measure in there, yes. the desired level right. of achievement. It can be raw numbers or percentages, yep. and then the time frame. It can be specific by May 31st, or it can be uh, relative within six weeks, within a year. So if you follow that advice, folks, there you go, and, and listen to what we're talking about today, we think you're going to be a whole lot better on. But you let us know. Give us yes. some feedback. Help us understand whether this is resonating or if you want more of this, if you want less of this, or tell Pritchard <laughs> to shut up, <laughs> whatever it takes. But give us feedback. Click that uh, uh, subscribe button and let us know. Uh, if you've got questions, we'd love to have you on air as well. So until next time, ciao. Hit us up on social media. Smash that subscribe button. Tune in next time for the new marketing podcast. Good luck. Good luck.